Want to speak real Russian from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at RussianPod101.com. Hi, welcome to Introduction to Russian. My name is Alicia, and I'm joined by. Hi, everyone. I'm Katya. In this lesson, you'll learn the basics of Russian grammar. Word order refers to the order in which words are structured to form a sentence in a given language. Consider the English sentence, I ate an apple. But first, let's remove the article an here for simplicity, so we're just left with I ate apple. The basic word order for English is subject, verb, object, or SVO for short. If we break down the English sentence, I ate apple, we can see that the subject I is presented first, followed by the verb ate, and then finally the object apple is positioned last. This is the basic word order for sentences in English. Russian uses the same word order as English, SVO. Parin kupil sabaku. Parin, the subject, a guy, goes first. Kupil, the verb bought, goes second. And sabaku, the object dog, goes last. This means that you can create any basic sentence in Russian simply by exchanging the English words for Russian words using a dictionary and still be understood. Isn't that easy? In fact, Russian word order is much more flexible than English. Compare the following examples. Cats eat mice. If we were to swap the subject with the object, we'd get Mice eat cats. As you can see, the SVO word order in English is fixed. Changing the word order changes the meaning of the sentence completely. Russian, on the other hand, is much more flexible. Starting with the SVO word order, Koshki yedyat myshei. We can swap the subject with the object like we did for English. And yet, myshei yedyat koshki. The meaning of the sentence remains the same. In fact, we could swap the sentence any which way, and it still wouldn't change the core meaning of the sentence. Unlike English, Russian doesn't rely on the word order of the sentence to signify if a word is the subject or an object, because it uses special word endings that act as markers to indicate the role of the word in the sentence. In this example, we use the word ending ye in mushe to indicate that mice is the object of the sentence. And so we can move it around anywhere in the sentence and it'd still be the object. Now you know how to create basic sentences in Russian, but how do you make a sentence negative? Negation in Russian is easy. Just add nie, meaning no, before the verb. On speed. On nie speed. Ja znaju. Ja nie znaju. Unlike English, Russian permits double negatives. So in English, you would say, nothing happened. But in Russian, we would say, nothing didn't happen. Ничего не произошло. You can form many basic negative sentences in Russian by placing no before the verb. Turning a sentence into a question in Russian is even easier than turning it into a negative sentence. Simply raise your pitch at the end of the question as you would in English. Unlike English, though, you do not need to rearrange the order of any words. Simply say the sentence and raise the pitch at the end. Ты понимаешь? Ты понимаешь? To ask more than yes or no questions, you'll need to learn question words. Some common question words are... Что? Как? Кто? Какой? Когда? We'll cover more of this in future lessons on Russian grammar. Well done! Let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. In this lesson, you learned that Russian sentences can be formed using an SVO word order, just like English. Additionally, Russian uses markers to indicate the role of a word in a sentence, which allows the word order to be much more flexible. You make a negative sentence by adding no before the verb. And to create basic questions in Russian, simply add a question mark and raise your pitch at the end of a sentence. Hello and welcome to Ask a Teacher. My name's Lina, and here we'll talk about the most common questions you have about the Russian language. And today's question is, what's the Russian alphabet called and where does it come from? Russian uses a writing system called Cyrillic script. Besides Russia, 
Cyrillic script is used in parts of Europe and Central Asia, although each country has its own modified Cyrillic script. There are 33 letters in the Russian alphabet, 10 vowels, 21 consonants, and two other signs, which don't have a sound on their own. What those two other signs do is they modify the consonant sound that comes before them. So there's a hard sign and a soft sign. Cyrillic script got its name from the Byzantine missionary Saint Cyril. He and his brother Methodius created the older Glagolitic alphabet. Cyrillic script was used together with the literary Old Church Slavonic language. Its early writings date back to the 9th century. In the 18th century, Peter the Great revised the Cyrillic script. He created new standardized letter forms, which were closely modeled on the Western Latin letter forms. Later on, Russian alphabet underwent a few other reforms, and two of them happened quite recently, in the 20th century. It's worth mentioning that the Russian you see in newspapers and on TV is not quite the same Russian you'll see written with pen and paper. This is because Russian people often write in cursive, and just like English cursive letters may look somewhat very different from print, so do Russian letters. Keep that in mind if you see something written down that looks quite unfamiliar to you. So how was it? Pretty interesting, right? I wonder if you have more questions to ask me. Do leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. До встречи! See you soon! Hi everyone and welcome to Ask a Teacher. I'm Lina and I'm here to answer the most common questions you send us about the Russian language. And the question for today is What are the differences between Russian and English sentence structures? The most obvious difference between Russian and English sentence structure is word order. English has a fixed order of subject, verb and object. Russian is a lot more flexible. In Russian you can place an object both before and after the verb. Take the sentence I don't know him. Я не знаю его. Here его, him, is an object. It can be placed before the verb Я его не знаю. After the verb, я не знаю его. And even in the very beginning of the sentence, его я не знаю. All these sentences would be perfectly grammatically correct and would mean one and the same thing. At first, it may seem simple and even convenient to be able to switch the words around. However, the reason Russian sentences make sense, no matter how you shuffle the words around, is that the words themselves carry a lot of grammar nuances. If you need to convey a grammar nuance, you make a change to the word, not the whole structure. And this change can be made with the help of suffixes, prefixes or endings. Almost all Russian words can be changed. Let's see how Russian nouns can be changed. Russian nouns decline depending on six grammar cases. You decline a noun when you need to change it from its initial or nominative form to some other form. For example, the word palichki, chopsticks, is an initial form. It can be used in a sentence like this. Вот мои палочки. Here are my chopsticks. To say that you eat sushi with chopsticks, you change the word палочки into палочками. I eat sushi with chopsticks. Я ем суши палочками. So you take out the ending E and replace it with the ending ами. Палочки палочками. Палочками is an instrumental case of the word палочки. As you can see, the change is made with the help of an ending, not with the help of preposition, as in English. Nouns can also change according to gender, masculine, feminine or neuter, and according to number, singular or plural. Adjectives and some pronouns can undergo the same changes as nouns. But don't you be scared. In some ways, Russian is even easier than English. First, there are no articles in Russian, as opposed to English, and some other languages like Spanish or French, which even have gender articles. Secondly, 
There are only three verb tenses in Russian, a lot fewer than English has. In English, in the present tense, for an action that happens regularly, you'd say, I played basketball. And for an action that is happening right this moment, you'd say, I am playing basketball. In Russian, instead of these two structures, you only need to use one, я играю в баскетбол. And then you can specify, я играю в баскетбол каждый день, I play basketball every day, и я играю в баскетбол сейчас, I am playing basketball right now. Another thing that makes learning Russian is just a bit easier is that there are no auxiliary verbs in Russian. Whereas like do, have or be. Of course, we do have all these basic words in Russian. The thing is that they don't act like auxiliaries in the sentences. In English, if you need to make a negative out of a statement, you need to carefully choose the right form of the auxiliary verb do, for example, and make changes to the word order. So, he liked ice cream, in its negative form becomes he didn't like ice cream. We like ice cream becomes we don't like ice cream. And the baby likes ice cream becomes the baby doesn't like ice cream and so on. In Russian, all you need to do is use one and the same word не, which can be translated into English as not. This word не can be placed in front of any word in the sentence, and that alone will make the sentence negative. So, он любил мороженое. He liked ice cream. Он не любил мороженое. He didn't like ice cream. Мы любим мороженое. We like ice cream. Мы не любим мороженое. We don't like ice cream. Ребенок любит мороженое. The baby likes ice cream. Ребенок не любит мороженое. The baby doesn't like ice cream. Easy. Lastly, just like with negatives, to turn a statement into a question, in English, you need to change the entire structure. In Russian, all you need to change is intonation. So in English, you are going to work tomorrow becomes are you going to work tomorrow? In Russian, you don't have to move the words around. All you need to do is change your intonation and the statement becomes a question. Like this. Ты идешь на работу завтра. You are going to work tomorrow. Ты идешь на работу завтра. Are you going to work tomorrow? So how was it? Pretty interesting, right? Do send me some more questions about the Russian language usage and I'll be happy to answer them. До встречи! See you soon! Hi everyone! Lina's here! Welcome to Ask a Teacher, a place where you'll get answers to your most common Russian questions. The question for today is, can you tell us about the Russian language and where it's spoken? Sure, I can! I'm glad people ask this question before they start learning Russian. It's good to have understanding of what you're learning before jumping straight into memorizing words and phrases. Russian is an East Slavic language with over 250 million native speakers around the world. Let me give you a brief introduction of the history of the Russian language. Russian is pretty old. It goes back to around 1st, 2nd centuries BC and comes from a combination of dialects from the Indo-European language family. The first origins of Russian come from Russia's literary language, Old Slavonic. Around the same time, the 1st, 2nd centuries BC, the first Slavic alphabet was created by two Greek missionaries and philologists, Cyril and his brother Methodius. Later that language was split into Russian, Ukrainian and Belarusian, which you can hear spoken today. Later, in the 17th-18th centuries, Peter the Great played a big role in the formation of the modern-day Russian by combining its Slavic written language with Russian everyday spoken language. Russian is not only the official language of Russia, but also of many other post-Soviet countries, such as Belarus, Kazakhstan and Kyrgyzstan. It's also widely spoken in the Ukraine, 
Moldova, the Baltic States, and many other former Soviet Union countries. As you can see, learning Russian doesn't limit you to Russia only. It opens up new opportunities to speak to other people from many different countries. Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Please leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. До встречи! See you soon! Hi everyone, Lena here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common Russian questions. The question for this lesson is, what is verb conjugation and what to consider when conjugating a verb? Verb conjugation is a change in the form of the verb depending on the number and person. Just like in English, there are three grammatical persons in Russian. For singular, they are я, I, ты, you, он, она, оно, he, she, it. For plural, they are мы, we, вы, you, они, they. So, to conjugate a verb, you need to change that personal ending. For example, я люблю читать. I like to read. Он читает. He reads. Дети читают. The children are reading. If we know how to conjugate the verb, we can avoid spelling mistakes, which are common in the unstressed personal endings of the verbs. For example, the verb читаете. You are reading. Which is the right vowel to put here? Е or И. In rapid speech, Е and И in the unstressed position sound the same. But if you know the right conjugation of the verb читать, you wouldn't hesitate. Е is the right vowel to put here. Читайте. In Russian, there are two conjugations. The vowel Е is mostly used in the endings of the first conjugation verbs. The vowel E is mostly used in the endings of the second conjugation verbs. Let's explore the typical endings of the first conjugation verbs. First person singular, U, you. Second person singular, Yesh, Yosh. Third person singular, Yet, Yot. First person plural, Yem, Yom. Second person plural, Yeti, Yoti. Third person plural, ut yut. Now let's take a look at the typical endings of the second conjugation verbs. First person singular, u yu. Second person singular, ish. Third person singular, it. First person plural, im. Second person plural, ite. Third person plural, at yat. Let's conjugate the verb chitat, meaning to read which is a first conjugation verb in Russian. Я читаю. I am reading. Ты читаешь. You are reading. Он читает. He is reading. Мы читаем. We are reading. Вы читаете. You are reading. Они читают. They are reading. So the pattern here is to remove the ending t from the infinitive form of the verb you'll find in a dictionary and add the appropriate ending of the first conjugation. The infinitives of the first conjugation verbs usually end in at, yat, ot, yet, ut, and so on. Let's move to the second conjugation verbs and conjugate the verb uchit, which means to teach, to learn, or to study. Ya uchu, I teach. Ti uchish, you teach. Он учит. He teaches. Мы учим. We teach. Вы учите. You teach. Они учат. They teach. The pattern here is once again to remove the ending it from the infinitive form of the verb and add the appropriate ending of the second conjugation to the remaining base uch. Most verbs ending in it are the second conjugation verbs. There are a few exceptions, such as the verbs brit, to shave, and slishit, to hear. Now you can easily conjugate the verbs, 
by looking up their infinitive forms in the dictionary and making changes to the endings. The verbs in different aspects and moods conjugate in the same way. For example, if you come across the verb прочитайте, you shouldn't be confused by the prefix pro in front of the verb читайте. You should just look up the infinitive form of the verb прочитать and conjugate it in the same way you would conjugate the verb читать. The trick's done! Conjugating verbs may seem difficult, but starting practicing with the basic verbs will certainly make you proficient and confident in a short time. Pretty interesting, right? If you have more questions, leave them in the comments below. До встречи! See you soon! Want to get cheat sheets, audiobooks, lessons, apps, and much more every month for free? Just click the link in the description to get your free language gifts of the month. Hello everyone, Lina here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common Russian questions. The question for this lesson is, how hard is it to learn Russian? The Foreign Service Institute, or FSI, created a scale to show how long it takes to get to professional level proficiency in speaking a foreign language for a native English speaker. Russian is a Category 3 language. That means it has significant differences from English. It takes a bit longer to learn than, say, Spanish or Italian, which have very similar writing systems to English. According to this scale, Russian takes approximately 44 weeks or 1,100 hours of study. But this will, of course, vary from person to person. The hardest part about Russian is grammar. There are many factors you have to consider when making a sentence, such as gender, number, suffixes and prefixes. With nouns, we have to be mindful of how they decline depending on the six Russian cases. With verbs, you have to be mindful of the imperfective and perfective forms, which are verb aspects that indicate whether an action is ongoing or has already been completed. For example, the word dog is feminine, sabaka, and the word cat is masculine, kot. If you want to say, I love my dog and I love my cat, you'll have to use different endings for the nouns. Я люблю свою собаку, but я люблю своего кота, respectively. You can see that even the pronoun my, svoi, will change for these sentences because of the animal's genders. But there are many things about learning Russian that are easier than you think. Here are a couple of other facts about Russian that you will like. First, there are not many exceptions or special cases, such as irregular verbs or strange spellings. Also, there's no strict word order in Russian. And even if you're not familiar with Russian grammar, you can put the words in the sentence in almost any order, and a native Russian speaker should be able to understand you. So Russian, just like any other language, has its own difficulties. But if you give it time and dedication, you should be well on your way to getting where you want to be. Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments below, and I'll do my best to answer them. До встречи! See you soon! Hi everyone, Lina here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher where I'll answer some of your most common Russian questions. The question for today is What's palatalization in Russian? And what's the difference between a soft sign and a hard sign? First off, what's palatalization? I know it sounds complicated, but most Russians know it simply as the softening of consonants. Palatalization is basically a way of pronouncing certain consonants. When you move your tongue, from the back of your teeth to the center of the roof of your mouth, the palate, and that move will soften your consonants. You can hear that softening in the English word new, for example. Let's do some examples so that you could understand the notion of consonant softening. In English, the hard pronunciation of the sound n is heard in the word nook. When you pronounce the word nook, the tip of your tongue is right behind your upper teeth. In the word new, the sound n is palatalized or softened, and that means 
that the tongue is lying flatly in the middle of the roof of your mouth. In Russian, palatalization or softness can be achieved by two means. First, you can palatalize your consonants by the vowels that follow them. In Russian, there are 10 vowels that come in hard and soft pairs. A, ya, u, i, o, yo, e, ye, u, yu. So the soft vowels are ya, i, yu, yo, ye, and the hard vowels are a, u, u, o, e. So if a consonant is followed by one of the soft vowels, it's considered palatalized. Let's take, for example, the Russian name Katya. In this name, the sound K is hard and not palatalized because it's followed by the hard vowel R. However, T is soft and palatalized because it's followed by the counterpart of the sound A, Ya, Katya. The second case when you can hear a palatalized consonant is when it's followed by a soft sign. A soft sign is a letter without its own pronunciation. What this letter does is it softens or palatalizes the sound preceding it. Let's compare two words mil, chalk, and mil, sandbar or show. Can you hear the softened l at the end of the mil? That's what the soft sign does. Now, if there's a soft sign, there also must be a hard sign, right? In Russian, a hard sign doesn't have its own pronunciation either. What hard sound does, it separates a consonant and a soft vowel in a word. For example, let's take the word atyeli. They ate something. If we didn't have a hard sign between the sounds t and y, we would end up with the word Ateli, which sounds different and means hotels. Well, how was it? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions to ask me? Leave them in the comments below, and I'll do my best to answer them. До встречи! See you soon! Hi everyone, my name is Katusha, and today we're gonna be doing top 25 Russian phrases. Let's start! Начнем! Здравствуйте! Hello. Здравствуйте. Hello. Uh, for example, Здравствуйте. Не подскажете, как пройти в библиотеку? Hello. Could you tell me how to get to the library? We also have another phrase for hello, which is uh, informal and sounds like Привет. 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 Hello. <laughs> Доброе утро. Good morning. Доброе утро. Good morning. Whenever you wake up, you just go Dobre utra or Dobre utra. Dobre utra. Sounds like that, okay? Dobry din. Good afternoon. Dobry din. Good afternoon. Dobry means that something is good. So people are wishing you something good in the day when you wake up, when they meet you at school in the daytime or like in the evening. But usually you say Privet, which is hello. Dobry vietr. Good evening. Dobry vietr. Good evening. I guess you can switch it to Privet if you talk to your friends, but yeah. If you talk to strangers, you better say a polite way and say Dobry vietr. Good evening. Dobro pajalovat. Welcome. Dobro pajalovat. Welcome. You're welcome to come, right? Same as Russian, it's good that you came. Dobro pajalovat. Добро пожаловать в Россию. Welcome to Russia. Как вас зовут? What's your name? Как вас зовут? What's your name? So first, when you see a stranger, you have to say Здравствуйте. Как вас зовут? Меня зовут. My name is Меня зовут and your name. My name is Din -din 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 -din. Let's practice. Здравствуйте. Как вас зовут? Меня зовут Катя. How was it? <laughs> Am I talking to myself? Приятно познакомиться. Nice to meet you. Приятно познакомиться. 
It was nice to meet you. Здравствуйте, как вас зовут? Меня зовут Катя. О, oh, приятно познакомиться. Got it? Как дела? How are you? When you meet anyone you know, you wanna ask what? You wanna ask how are you, right? So, sometimes instead of hello, you just go how are you. Как дела? Привет, как дела? Literally, how are your things going? So now you can make a conversation. А у тебя? How about yourself? Привет, как дела? Хорошо. А у тебя? And how are you doing? Which makes sense. So they care about you. They want to know how you're doing. It's nice. Спасибо. Thank you. Спасибо. Thank you. Привет, как дела? Хорошо, спасибо. А у тебя? Пожалуйста. Please. You're welcome. Пожалуйста. Please. Or you're welcome. The difference in uh, please and you're welcome is just the way you say it. For example, Mama, please, I don't want to go to school. Пожалуйста, мама, я не хочу идти в школу. Which we can hear every morning. Or you can say a present, an iPad from my friend is like, oh, спасибо. And they go like, пожалуйста. Like, you're welcome. Что нового? What's new? Что нового? What's new? Basically, it's same as как дела. Just you want to know more details of how things are going. So, привет, как дела? Что нового? Hi, how are you? What's new? До встречи. See you later. До встречи. Usually we don't wave our hands. <laughs> see you later. See you soon. Means literally, till next time I see you. До свидания. Goodbye. Or you can say, пока-пока, which means bye-bye. Где находится туалет? Where is the bathroom? Где находится туалет? Where is the bathroom? Uh, you can make it shorter because the word находится, literally means located or to be, can be just cut out. So you can just say, где туалет? Where is the toilet? Or you can ask, где здесь туалет? Where is the toilet around here? It's a very important phrase <laughs> because it's not easy to find free toilets. <laughs> Remember that one. Сколько это стоит? How much does it cost? Сколько это стоит? How much is it? How much does it cost? So, try. Next time when you're in shop. Я хочу заказать. I would like to order. Я хочу заказать. I would like to order something. Я хочу заказать салат. I would like to order salad. You made up your mind, so you want to order this. So, я хочу. If you want to say it in a more polite way, for example, you're in a very high-end restaurant, and so you want to be polite with the waiter, so you could say, я бы хотел заказать. I would like to order. Я бы хотела заказать чашечку кофе. I would like to order a cup of coffee. That would sound much nicer. Счет, пожалуйста. Check, please. Счет, пожалуйста. The check, please. Oh, официант. Счет, пожалуйста. Now you can have a dinner or lunch in the restaurant. That's nice. Который час? What time is it? Который час? What time is it? Excuse me, what time is it now? Извините, который час? Хм. Hmm. Извините. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Извините. I'm sorry and excuse me. If you say I'm sorry, you can say Извините. Like you're really sorry about something you've done, but you can say excuse me like you stepped on somebody's foot in a train. You can say Ой, извините. Хорошо. Good. Okay. Хорошо. Okay. Good. When somebody asks you, how are you doing? Как дела? You can say, хорошо, спасибо. I'm good. Thank you. Помогите. Help. Помогите. Someone. Help, help, help me, somebody. Помогите. For example, if you're a big forest and you don't know your way out, so you have to shout to let people hear you. So you're like, 
but I like it. But it's a really rare situation. I hope you won't be in it. Da. Yes. Da. Yes. Russian people say a lot. Da, 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 da. Yes, 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 yes. I agree. Da, da, da. Нет. No. Нет. No. Нет. Would you like to go to dinner with me? No. Нет. Thank you for watching. And today we did top 25 Russian phrases for daily conversation. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thank you. Bye-bye. Пока-пока. Oh, Katya, thank you. Thank you so much. You're so good. Oh, не за что.